When you think football, what comes to mind? For many, the last thing running across your mind is lingerie. Well, throw your traditional thoughts of football out the window. A sport that was once entertainment for families is now a little too hot for TV. A professional league for women, lingerie football. Let's take a look. Now everyone knows that sex sells, but a woman bent over hiking a ball in boy shorts is lewd. And apparently some of us are accepting it. You tell me, is this just another playing field to exploit women, or are we overreacting? Are yeah, we? You know, I don't think it's an overreaction. I think it's certainly exploitation of women. But so in a capitalist society, a lot of other things that go on out there. So whoever came up with this idea thought, well, maybe I should just join the bandwagon. I think it's absurd, but um, you know, sex as you open up sells. And I think this is what's going on here. But I'm totally against it. But um, it, it brings attraction to in commercial ways to people. It just, now, would you watch it? <laughs> no, I don't think I would buy a ticket for it. Okay. All right. Now, I actually, I actually think it's quite interesting. Uh, I played football in undergraduate, in mm -hmm. undergrad, and um, we weren't in lingerie, but um, and it was flag. But we were quite violent, and um, I think I commend these women. Honestly, they play football, and uh, there's just not a place really for women to do that professionally. And it is in lingerie, which gets people in the door. But they are playing football. But do they have to play it in their underwear? I don't think they have to play it in their underwear, <laughs> but. <laughs> but to be perfectly honest, are people going to watch if they're not playing it in their underwear? I, I don't know. I don't think they would. <laughs> I can tell you not a whole lot of people showed up to my games. <laughs> not that I would play well, in lingerie. I played, but I played flag football, too. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, mm -hmm. I played. You know, I got injured. I stopped playing. But, you know, I mean, to play it in your underwear, I think it's, uh, I think it's a little much. I, I, I agree. I think the lingerie is a bit much. Yeah. I, I think... What we have done is continue to move the line that we've drawn in the sand about what's acceptable in our society. Mm -hmm. uh, we move the line because we're profit driven. Mm -hmm. All right. Absolutely. There was a point where there was a law in the city that said that you could not sell alcohol within 100 feet of a church, mm. but the Bridgestone Arena was built less than 100 feet close to this church. And so the council amended the legislation just for this one ordinance so they could sell beer in the Bridgestone Arena. Mm. These are efforts that we do to try to make the next dollar. And so in the same Absolutely. manner, what we've done is we've said, okay, we respect our women. They are the mothers and the sisters and the daughters and the aunts of, of, our, of our sons and, and, and husbands. But if it's going to sell a ticket, it's going to help pay for this building, we'll move the line back a little bit further. So the question has to be asked, what are the cheerleaders going to wear? Hmm. Ooh, yeah, that's, 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 a that's a good, good question. question. A good that question. is a good question. Yeah. Because this whole idea of lingerie football came out of what is known as the lingerie bowl. Mm -hmm. It started in 2004, and it was the halftime entertainment yeah. at the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Because while we're at home watching all those high-priced commercials, right. people that are actually sitting in the domes, you know, not necessarily interested in those commercials. Right. So they started in 2004 with this lingerie bowl and it caught on sure yeah. you know um, actually Mitch Montanza he's the one that started it he created a woman's seven-on-seven seven tackle football league mm -hmm. in 2009 during the worst economic economic time since the Great Depression Montanza launched 10 franchise teams the Chicago Bliss Miami Caliente New York Majesty Philadelphia Passion, Tampa Breeze, Dallas Desire, Denver Dream, Los Angeles Temptation, 
San Diego sed seduction, and Seattle mist. Despite the controversy surrounding this lingerie league, Nashville has decided to jump on the bandwagon. How do you think that this is going to impact Nashville? I think we're gonna, I think that's, um I think he'll have more opposition here in Nashville than I think he's had in other cities. I think that Nashville overall has a few more traditional values than some of the other cities that he started this in. Um, I think that um, Los Angeles being right next door to the porn capital kind of uh, kind of helped usher that in for him, but I don't think that, that, that it'll be as easy for him here in Nashville. I think he'll have a lot of problems, yeah. a lot of opposition. Well, this is the Bible protesting. Belt. Absolutely. This is the buckle. But this, yeah. is also, <laughs> this is also the place where the State Department of Revenue allows you to buy uh, tax stamps for illegal drugs you're going to sell. And as long as you pay tax on the drugs, you don't have to give up your money if you're arrested. Mm -hmm. Little known fact here in the state of Tennessee. So even though in the Bible but we're not legalizing drugs, but we're legalizing the money you get from the drug sale, as long as you pay your sales tax on it. Yeah, but look how long it took us to actually get the lotto here. You know, people did not want gambling here. I mean, it was public, it was open, and, and it was supposed to benefit education. They fought for years and years to keep us from having but I think that, that op opposition was mainly based upon the illegal gambling sites that did not want to lose money once gambling became legal, sure. mm -hmm. more so than the, the conception of gambling is wrong. Right. So, you know, and we deal with these issues of what is right and what is wrong. And when we have states and cities that are having budget deficits, when you're talking about if this Nashville uh, lingerie team is projected to bring in maybe $10 million infusion to the city, I think that we may be hard pressed to say no to it. Well, money is the bottom line. Look, yes. we're out of time for Hot Topics. I'd like to thank you for coming and being with us today. Coming up next, Find out the new challenges taking place at Tennessee State University when we sit down with Dr. Portia Shields, next in Executive Circle.